Okay, so let's turn to page number 18 and start on the power and wiring installation. Initially, we're going to concentrate only on the wiring between the indoor unit and the outdoor unit. You can see all we need to do between the indoor and outdoor unit is simply get terminal 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, and 4 to 4. But believe it or not, that could be trickier than it seems. Since we haven't even brought power to the unit yet, this should be a moot point, but I'll say it anyway. Make sure the power is off while you're doing this. Let's open up the front cover of the indoor unit, or what I call popping the hood, and remove the field wiring terminal block cover. Pull the 14-4 cable coming from the outdoor unit through the back of the indoor unit into the chassis, have it come out the front of the terminal block. Okay, so 14-4 cabling is 14 gauge with four conductors. Terminal 1 is our neutral terminal, so I'm going to connect the white conductor to Terminal 1. Terminal 2 is the communication, so I'm going to connect the red conductor to Terminal 2. Terminal 3 is the hot terminal, so I'm going to connect the black conductor to Terminal 3. And Terminal 4 is the ground, so I'm going to connect the green conductor to Terminal 4. Replace the cover of the terminal block and you're all done with the wiring of the indoor unit. In the rare occasion where your local inspector requires a disconnect between the indoor and outdoor unit, a three-pole disconnect will be required and it will need to be located in close proximity to the indoor unit. Okay, let's move on to page number 20. Okay, let's remove the service panel on the right-hand side of the outdoor unit to expose the electrical terminals. Let's secure the main power conduit, or what most people call the WIP, as well as the interconnecting cable between the indoor and outdoor unit with lock nuts to the conduit mounting bracket. Let's take advantage of the two wire clamps and make sure that the wires are secure internal to the terminal strip of the outdoor unit. Let's connect our 208 230 volt power to the lower terminal strip, L1. L2 and ground. And as a reminder, at the indoor unit, we connected the white wire to terminal 1, the red wire to terminal 2, the black wire to terminal 3, and the green wire to terminal 4. So let's do the same at the outdoor unit. Crossing the interconnecting wires between the indoor and outdoor unit will cause a malfunction and also the E6 error code. It is not recommended to splice the interconnecting cable between the indoor and outdoor unit, but if you do, do not use wire nuts to reconnect. Only use crimp type connections. Never use wire nuts. Now let's replace the service panel on the right hand side of the outdoor unit. Lastly, we need to connect the main power wires and conduit to a disconnect box. We're going to use one made by the Diversitec people. I strongly recommend the use of a surge protection device, something like the Intermatic AG3000. It's a very inexpensive item that can save you thousands of dollars in lost equipment if the system were to experience a power surge.